Okay, can you hear me? No. I know you can't see me, but can you hear me? Can Shally hear me? Shally can hear me? Yeah. Okay, let's wait for these guys and see if they can hear me. Who? Oh. The people in the live stream. I got Everybody's it. waiting? Everybody's waiting for, for us, man. Oh, no, I'm the guy's not, Nickel. No, I don't know. We were having an audio issue. Let's see. The people in the live stream. I hear everything. I hear everything. Everybody's waiting for, for us, man. <laughs> All right. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. Okay. Let me start over, man. Let me start over for the hundredth time. How are you using this? Email? How many times? Can you guys see Juan? Get in the camera, man. Get, hey, look who we got up in the house. Okay, JD and JC. I needed to be here, man. That's why the audio came back, because I just got in. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, wait, let me, you can't set up my playbook, though. Hang on a minute, man. Can you guys see my playbook here? Come on, man. Okay, let's, let's go, for real. Uh, <clears throat> A320. <clears throat> let me drink some water first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just just turn it just turn it on. It's connected. A320 variable thrust versus fixed thrust. Let's talk about it. A320 fixed and variable thrust. <clears throat> okay. Loud and clear. Five by five. Beautiful. That's what we like to hear. Okay. So in this live stream. Uh, we're going to talk about a fixed thrust versus variable thrust, what it means, what's the difference, and let's talk about it. So, fixed thrust is exactly what it sounds like. Thrust is fixed. Give me some examples of fixed thrust. Take off, fixed thrust. Go around, fixed thrust. Climb, fixed thrust. What does that mean specifically? It means that thrust will be fixed and pitch will vary to maintain speed. Pitch varies to maintain speed. Constant power setting, pitch attitude goes up and down. That's what you're looking at, okay, in order, in order to maintain speed. Now, with variable thrust, it's the exact opposite. Thrust varies to maintain speed here. So, thrust will vary to maintain speed. Six different variable thrust modes on the 320. I'm going to share them with you now. The first of which is glide slope star. The second one is out star. This, uh, the third one is FPA. Fourth one is vertical speed. Fifth one is final app. Come on, man. Who's delivering this stuff to you guys? Sixth one, flight director off. These six modes, or six uh, FMA modes, with I guess actually this, the sixth one being just flight directors off, not so much an FMA mode, but uh, the fifth one is final app. Sixth one being flight director off. This is where we get the... Uh, thrust to vary to maintain speed. Now, to further understand this, let's talk about glide slope star. With glide slope star, typical three degree path. Okay, coming down the glide slope. You like that, sir? We got JC in the studio. JD. Okay, we're live in the 305. If you guys are in Miami and you want to come do this live with us, come sit down, man. Grab a seat. We'll give you a seat to come watch the show live. Okay? All right. Shiley's laughing at me because I'm like, nuts. Is it too much energy? Leave it in comments. I want to know. Okay, so you're, you're coming down the glide slope. It's a three-degree glide slope, usually, not always. It's usually a three-degree path. The pitch is going to be uh, pretty well constant coming down the path, and the thrust is going to vary to maintain the three-degree path all the way down, and this is why glide slope star, okay, is a variable thrust mode so that the pitch can vary so that we can maintain that constant three degree path on the way down. The same is true, by the way, for final app. Okay, final app is the same exact thing whereby we want to maintain a constant rate of descent all the way down, approximately three degrees, and therefore the thrust must vary to maintain speed. Now, guess what else is constant? FPA. This is no different. Ladies and gents, guys and gals, boys and girls, children of all ages, okay? Glide slope star. Final lap, FPA, and vertical speed is all about maintaining a constant rate of either descent, of angle, 
In this case, it's typically three degrees in order to maintain a constant path to the runway. The only way to, ma the only way to maintain a constant pitch like this is to have your thrust vary so as to you being able to maintain that pitch all the way down, hence the reason we have variable thrust. Now, the one that a lot of people don't understand is this one, out star. So let's talk about out star now. Let's talk about you and me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so, so here we are. Okay, let's say the altitude is 5,000 feet. Okay, and we're climbing. Okay, we're climbing and we need to capture 5,000 feet. So the question becomes, when does out star go into the FMA? If you know the answer, leave it in comments. Now, if you were here watching the live stream just a few minutes ago before we had the audio problem, you probably heard me answer already, so leave it in comments, okay? Let me get a little, a little something to wet my whistle because I'm drying out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <clears throat> the deal is this. Out star is going to go in at the appropriate time depending on rate of climb and rate of descent. Most people say it's 5% prior, 10% prior rate of climb or descent. It's 500 feet prior, 300 feet. They give me some kind of actual unit. And the fact of the matter is, it's not really a unit. It's whenever the aircraft deems it appropriate based on rate of climb and or rate of descent that it's time to, to initiate the level off to maintain a 1G path. To maintain a 1G path. Now that's the crucial part. If I am at 40, 700 feet climbing at a rate of uh, let's say 1,000 feet per minute it may be time to initiate the 1G level off path out star is going to go in now if I'm climbing at a rate of climb of say 500 feet a minute okay 500 feet a minute maybe my level off is going to be initiated a little bit later not so much as at 4700 maybe it's more at 4800 so I guess the point I'm making is it depends on rate of climb or descent. That's when OutStar goes in. Now, the second you get OutStar, you're going to get a variable uh, thrust mode. And this is further validated by the FMA, okay, five column FMA here. Auto thrust is the first column. It'll say speed, and then you're going to get OutStar. And the reason speed goes in is because think about if you didn't have auto thrust, if you were just hand flying, right, if you're just hand flying here, okay, What's going to happen is as you begin to level off, the thrust is going to reduce, right? So you lower the nose, thrust reduction happens. That's a variable thrust now. Thrust is varying to maintain speed. That is the reason that we have out star on the list of when a variable thrust mode is actually going to go in. And this is true not only on the 320, folks. This is true also on the 7.3, okay? Let me move my playbook. Can you guys see this? OneStepPrep.com forward slash playbook. You know drivers or 7.3? Do you guys fly 320? Do you guys fly 7.3? Leave it in comments. We want to know on, what you man. fly. Talk to us. I don't see anything. No, no communication here. Everybody's, they're, they're, they're too intrigued okay. with what we're saying. 320 or 7.3, sir? Hey, do you guys want more of this live? Uh, we're going to be doing more of these live feeds. I was saying that earlier. Uh, with working audio, okay? That's the most important part, right? Um, so we're going to be doing more of these things. Appreciate you guys being here with us. Which one did I not cover? I think we got them all. Outstar, hopefully that makes sense, versus, versus the rest of these. Uh, thrust, that is fixed. Let me go to these examples over here. Typically on takeoff, five column FMA, right? You're going to see something here that says man toga. Why? Because thrust is manual. Okay, thrust is manual. Zabala! Capitan Juan, I fly the A320. Good for you, brother. Appreciate you being here. If you have questions, and then hopefully we can answer them, leave them in chat, all right? Mantoga SRS runway. Auto thrust blue. That's what we usually say. This is a four column. It's actually five column FMA, so I guess I'm missing a column over here. Let me divide this up better. This is my auto, fl uh, auto flight capability or auto land capability. Then we have auto thrust blue. All right, so this is on takeoff, Mantoga SRS runway auto thrust blue, right? And what does this really mean? Well, when you rotate off, you're going to have your flight director bar waiting for you somewhere up here in the neighborhood of about 15 degrees nose up. And you're going to hold that 15 degrees nose up, and the thrust is going to be constant at takeoff thrust, okay? And then when we reach the uh, thrust reduction acceleration altitude, we reduce the thrust back to climb. 
These are all fixed thrust modes, and you're following the SRS, the speed reference system, aka your flight directors, right? You're following your flight directors, and your speed is 100 dependent upon pitch right now because the thrust is fixed. So hopefully that makes sense, okay, the difference between these two. Now, the last one that I didn't go through is flight directors off, so let's talk about flight directors off. Anytime you turn the flight directors off, you will force your auto thrust into speed mode. Okay, so auto thrust is forced into speed mode when the flight directors are off. And this is the reason why, by the way, your memory item uh, for the TCAS RA is autopilot off, flight directors off. Anytime you get a TCAS RA, when you get a TA, traffic alert, that's when it says traffic, traffic, you're going to turn the autopilot off, right? Autopilot's off. I'm sorry, at the RA, at the TA, you don't do anything, right? Traffic alert, you just stand by. TCAS, I have control. At the RA, that's the resolution advisory, this is where we go autopilot off, flight directors off. So when you turn the autopilot off, obviously now you're in control. When you turn the flight directors off, you force the thrust into speed mode. And the importance of that is in case you get a climb or descent RA, which it's going to be, it could be maintain vertical speed, which would just be level flight usually. Okay, but let's say they give you a climb and it shows uh, the no fly zone to be, let me make it a little bit less aggressive. So this whole area down here is going to be in red, basically saying, hey, don't fly here. Put the, put the IVSI indication anywhere above, something like that, right? So as you start your climb and you start pitching up, you're going to obviously need speed, okay, so, or thrust, right, to maintain speed as you think about driving a car, man. You're driving a car, you go up a hill, you come down the back end of the hill. Here's your car over here. Let's see if I can draw a car. Does that look like a car, Shelly? Uh, she said it doesn't look like a car. Does it look like a car to you guys? Okay, leave it in chat. I want to hear if this looks like a car. Okay, so we're going up the hill, right? As I go up the hill, let's say we got the um, cruise control set to 60 miles per hour. And if you're in Miami, more like 100 miles an hour down here. You see what I'm saying? So, so 60 miles an hour, as we go uphill, it's going to step on the gas a little bit, right? Well, your speed mode is the same thing. As I pitch up to comply with my TCAS RA, my thrust is going to apply because speed mode is a variable thrust mode. Now, as you come down the backside here, okay, let's say it was a descend RA instead of a climb. When you do the descent, what do you think is going to happen? Same thing in reverse, only now, see if I can draw the plane descending. Okay, here we're going to have a thrust reduction. So hopefully that makes sense now. Fix versus variable and the six different modes. One more time, it's going to be glide slip star, out star, track FPA. Uh, flight director's off, vertical speed, and that's it. That's my six. Okay, those are my six right there. So on a side note, okay, I do want to share this with you guys. We're going to be doing a live stream here. Uh, we're doing a webinar for the 737, date, date to be determined. Who's going to star in that one? Yes, yes, coming in. Okay, okay, Juan's going to do a, uh, right, uh, Juan's going to be doing a, uh, a 737 webinar. We got two webinars coming up, okay? We got a 737 webinar that Juan's going to do for our 73, you got to be a member to go to these things, okay? Um, we do some public ones, that, so this one's going to be a private webinar. But we're going to do a public one. Let me share that one with you, one that's just available to the public. And the one that we're going to do is how to choose a career airline. Okay, now I had this idea today, driving in here, to do this live stream, much like what we're doing here right now. We're going to do another live stream at a date that we'll set out in the future and we'll mail it out in our mailing list. If you're not on our mailing list, go to onestepprep.com. On the top, there's a blue tab, a blue bar that uh, has our uh, mailing list that you can click and you'll get our newsletter. And we're gonna post in there the date for this, but how to choose a career airline. A lot of people, including myself at one point, were of the opinion that the large carriers, major carriers, are the ones where you want to make a career. And while that's true, sometimes there's a lot of different things to look at, okay? So when you're looking for a career carrier, you want to know about money, you want to know about location, 
You want to know about upgrade time. You want to know about liquidity of the airline. And if you don't know what that means, uh, you definitely need to go to this live stream. You want to know how... So what are you trying to say, man? What I'm saying is... Hey, let me tell you something, man. What are he's trying to say? To apply to spirit? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's where I, that's where I fly. Um, but there's a, lot of, there's a lot of carriers that uh, are not commonly thought of as being a career destination, and they are the best career destination. Okay, I'm seeing the live replay of JC on the, on the screen here. Um, so you need to talk about your company. You need to know about liquidity. You need to know about their balance sheet. Okay, what does their balance sheet look like? There's a lot of stuff, man, that, that goes into the career decision. Okay, Francis says, what's up? Francis, what's going on? Who else we got up in here? Akio, it would be appreciated if you can talk about cost index. For sure, man, what do you want to know about it? Let's talk about cost index. Hey, this, this uh, how to choose a career airline, I'm going to, um, I don't know what day we're going to do this. We'll probably do it this month. What are we, in June right now? We'll probably do it in June. Uh, when do you guys want to do it? Okay, you tell me. We'll probably maybe give us like two weeks from today. Next week, which one we do next week? We're going to do 7-3 next week or no? Uh, we're going to do how, how to choose a career airline. Next week? Yeah. And then 7-3. Yeah, and then we'll do 7-3. Okay. I think we'll do it uh, maybe Friday the 12th. How's that sound for you guys? Or maybe Wednesday the 10th. Wednesday the 10th. I like that better. Yeah, Wednesday the 10th. Wednesday. Tentative date, but I think this is what we'll do. Wednesday, June 10th. What time? What, what time do you guys want to do? What time do you guys want to do? 10 a.m.? Is that, is that good? 10 a.m. Okay, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Wednesday, June 10th. I'm going to walk through how uh, I would go about choosing a career airline. What are the different things I look for? A lot of different things you look for, okay? Some of which you probably don't even really think about. Because a lot of people are just saying, well, I want to fly a 777 or a 747. How do I do that? Well, that's good until coronavirus hits, and then you're not flying anything anymore. Okay, so you got to look at something else beyond just that. I'm going to talk about it here. Wednesday, June 10th. Let me write it down so I don't forget it. Wednesday, June 10th, 10 a.m. Now, the 737 webinar, okay, uh, Juan's going to do that. We'll figure out a date for that, and we'll push it out on our news list. Uh, Akil, I hope I'm saying your name Right there, brother. We will uh, talk cost index here right now. Cost index. Wednesday, June 10th, 10 a.m. It's in the schedule. It's in the schedule. Okay, cost index, CI. Okay, cost index is what you're going to input um, into the McDo, the FMS, whatever have you, right? And it basically is telling you how economical do you want to fly the plane. How efficient, how economical versus, it's a mix between economy and performance. Yeah. Fuel consumption. Okay, econ versus performance. Now, the higher the number, the higher the number, the more you're leaning towards performance. So if you're doing cost index zero, that's all the way on the side of economy, econ. If you're doing cost index 99, that's all the way on the side of performance. So you gotta ask yourself, your company, they're gonna come up with a number between zero and 99 as to how close they wanna fly towards the side of economy versus performance. The higher the number, the faster you go, more fuel burn, get there faster. Uh, the lesser the number, the slower you go, get there slower, right? So sometimes if your uh, flight is delayed for whatever reason, weather delay or something, uh, maybe the flight was scheduled to leave at 12 o'clock, you're going to arrive at 2 p.m., you get a little weather delay of 20 minutes, the dispatch paperwork initially comes out with a cost index of 35, which is pretty typical. That's actually somewhere around here. Okay, so it's kind of a happy medium between efficiency versus performance. Um, and then now you're, you're behind schedule 20 minutes, right? So you're supposed to get there at 2 p.m. Weather delay, now we're behind schedule. It's pushing us to 2.20. So how can I expedite getting there so that we can uh, get, this, get closer to being on time, right? On time performance. Uh, we can push the cost index up. And so here, you may see a, co a cost index increase just to get you there faster. Um, a couple different things for you to note. It's important for you to note. Uh, cost index, I have another video on this that talks about cost index zero. If a controller ever asks you, what's the slowest you can go? How slow can you slow down? Your answer is going to be uh, whatever you can get for cost index zero, right? So you're going to need to go 
into your uh, McDo, the perf page, and you're going to want to change your cost index to zero. That's going to give you a mock number. Let's say your mock number slows back to 7.6. That's the slowest you can go. Now, the beauty of flying cost index zero is that it's still going to give you that 0.3G buffet margin protection up at altitude. So when you're cruising and you have that 0.3G buffet margin protection, you never want to go any less than that because you find yourself in an, e in an area that you can easily uh, get too slow on the side of approaching a stall buffet. So cost index zero is the slowest you want to go. Uh, the fastest really you want to go is somewhere in the neighborhood of 99. That's about all you can really put in. And all of these numbers are governed by your company, Dispatch Center. Okay, so I hope that helps. Uh, who asked that? Akil? Hopefully I'm saying your name right, man. If not, I'm sorry. Okay, Thru uh, fixed thrust versus variable thrust. How many people are watching this thing? How many people are here with us? Okay, what else you guys want to talk about? Leave it in the chat. Leave it in chat. Okay, throw a Oh, oh, oh. Uh, next week, June 10th, how to choose a career airline based on what do you want to fly, stability of the company, where you want to live, what routes you want to fly, liquidity, blah, 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 blah. Okay, all that stuff we're going to be talking about. Flaps one is slats only, Francis. Good question. What is flaps one? Now watch it on the ground on flight. Okay. Yeah, that depends. Hey, careful. Okay. Mm -hmm. On the ground or in flight? Is it config one plus F? Yep. Or is it config one? Yep. Okay. Typically, when you're calling flaps one, uh, we get slats out. This is normally in flight, but you could be doing one plus F. Okay, uh, on the ground. Uh, I say your name correct. Okay, good, brother. Good, man. Good, 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 good. Excellent. What else we got? What else we got? I Soft go around. Soft go around. Captain Mert. Gumus. Gumus. Um, that's basically a toga touch, and then you bring it back out of there. This is crazy, man. We're just doing a live stream answering questions for free. Come on, brother and sister. Better than that, you ain't going to Okay, Let, so typically, only in one step, one SP, JJ all day, push play, learn the easy way, we live in the 305, we're turning this into a rap career, yay, <laughs> okay, okay, so, um, I, gotta, I gotta draw straight lines, man, I gotta calm down, because I can't draw a straight line right now, okay, alright, so, so, somebody asked me about, what did they ask me about, soft toga, uh, soft, soft go around, okay, so typically, we get down to men's, Execute the go-around. Uh, to get into the go-around phase, get into the go-around phase, I got to have flaps one plus toga selected. If you don't have flaps one, you're never going to get into the go-around phase. So now your FMA is going to read Mantoga SRS auto thrust uh, blue. Uh, this typically is going to result in you getting go-around power until we finally outstar. Then we're going to get speed mode, variable thrust, and then we're going to level off. But with a soft go-around, typically on a soft go-around, it's just a touch of toga to get the climb and the SRS initiated. So when you put, when you touch toga, right, it's going to Initially, your flight directors were gonna, are going to increase, okay, in terms of pitch attitude. They're going to go up to the SRS, which is 15 degrees nose up. And then, uh, you know, the reason you would want to do this is in case maybe you're here on the approach at 900 feet and the go-around altitude is 2,000 feet. So you really only have 1,100 feet to climb and you don't want uh, toga power that long because you do not want to overshoot this altitude. So you could do what's called a soft go around, which is a touch of toga back to climb. When you touch toga, you're commanding SRS mode. The flight director bars will populate into the uh, attitude indicator. Um, and then when you go back to climb thrust, you're going to now have the climb thrust mode that will quickly turn into out star. And now your flight directors will go from SRS into out star. And the flight director bar will begin to come down. Okay. 
So what, a soft go around in a nutshell, it's a temporary touch of toga to command SRS and then a reduction of thrust to climb so that we can now go into out star, which would happen anyways, right? But we're reducing climb uh, thrust to climb thrust so that as to not totally overshoot this altitude. So it's not very typical for you to do soft go arounds, but um, you know, it is one of these things where um, sometimes you do it, right? You never know. So um, what else we got? Hey, I hope you guys have found this uh, content to be valuable. June 10th, we're going to be doing a live stream again for how to choose a career airline, and then we're going to do a 737 uh, webinar as well. And I have another question. Another question, Joey. Does the go around works with A320 CEO? Not all of them. No. Okay. Not. It doesn't work with all of them. Now you could have a. Um, you could have a software revision that gives you the soft go around. This is all software, folks. Plug and play. So you could have a uh, an update, right? It's like a freaking iPad. These computers, man. This this the the A320. When it rolls out of the factory, historically, no, it it doesn't. That's something that they've incorporated more into the Neos. But you could have it in the CEO as well. Okay. That's an option, Joe. So it is an option. Yeah, it's a customer okay. customer option. So Merck, appreciate you. Uh, what else we got going on? So Wednesday, huh? I'm the man. Is that what he said? Yeah. You the man. We try, man. Okay, we're trying to we're trying to we're trying to deliver value, brother. Appreciate you. So June 10th, we're gonna do another live stream. We're gonna do a lot of these. We're gonna be doing a lot of these. Okay. Did I say 10th earlier? Yeah. Yes. 10th Wednesday, 10th a.m. Okay, 6:10 10 at 10 a.m. Okay. Then we're gonna do a 7:3 webinar, and then we might just pop up on a random day like today. Okay. Yeah. That we're here in the office, we just pop up randomly and talk to you. Whatever now. Uh, if you don't know, onestepprep.com is the website. Okay, onestepprep.com. All kinds of programs there. Guaranteed oral pass. Playbook. Shally, man. Sh she's demoing the playbook. Okay, onestepprep.com forward slash playbook. We have a nice playbook deal going on there. Th look, this is, if you're wondering what this is, 60 page, easy read, how to get through any type rating program. Okay, Re uh, not only type rating, initial, recurrent, upgrade, you name it, any training program. Okay, so that's what that's all about. Um, what else we got going on? Any other questions? Last minute things. Got to check the QRH. Questions. Look at Shally. Shally. Shally's on the screen. We're watching live playback. Okay. How long have we been on? Almost 30 minutes. What time is it? 1.34. Okay. So, hey, appreciate. Nice to meet you. We, uh, maybe we'll do a giveaway too at some point. We could do another giveaway at some point. Yeah. I can do that. You know, hey, whatever you want us to talk about, um, leave it in chat or send it to Shally. Okay, go to contact us, send her an email. Can you guys do a live stream on this? We want to hear from you guys what you want to hear uh, about, what, we, what you want to hear us talk about, and we're going to deliver it to you uh, here live. So, any thoughts on the PIA crash? Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Uh, that's all I can tell you. No, the, 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 um, Investigation is not concluded, so I'm going to uh, refrain from really saying anything on it, but uh, it's our thoughts and prayers are with them. That's all I can tell you. It's very unfortunate. But All right, hey, we'll see you in the next live stream. OneStepPrep.com is the website, and keep checking in with us here uh, for continued content daily, uh, both on YouTube, on our social media channels, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Tweeter, I don't know, whatever they're going to come up with tomorrow. We'll keep pushing it. We'll see you here very soon for the next live stream, guys. Take care.